everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Yeager Fine. I'm an assistant dean at Fordham Law School, which is in New York City. And that's the reason I chose for my theme this, this afternoon, uh, making the most of your LLM in New York City. Uh, you could see on the PowerPoint my email address, tfine at law.fordham.edu. That is an invitation to any of you to contact me later, whether it be this evening, tomorrow, or in a year from now, if you have any questions either about Fordham Law School or about LLM programs generally. What I want to speak to you about today is the New York City LLM experience. How is it different from the LLM experience elsewhere? And then I want to talk to you a little bit about Fordham Law School, my law school, and our LLM program um, a bit. I want to say one thing at the outset, and that is that if you choose to do an LLM program in the United States, you will have a fantastic academic experience. You cannot choose poorly. Any of the law schools that offer an LLM program are going to give you a fantastic academic experience. What you get in New York City, at a law school in New York City, is a fantastic academic experience, but you get much more. And I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that I think you can expect if you do an LLM in New York City beyond just a wonderful academic experience. First of all, you are going to have experiences to network within the law school community. Now, what do I mean when I talk about networking? Networking is a word that we use a lot. And I think a lot of us have different conceptions of what it means to be in a network or to actively network. I think of networking as relationship building. We make friends, we date, or we're in a relationship, a romantic relationship. Networking is just a different kind of relationship. They're professional relationships. And one of the great things about New York City and spending time in New York City um, as a student is the ability that you have to connect with a larger professional network. First of all, in a large city like New York, um, your adjunct, adjunct faculty members, the part-time faculty members, are drawn from some of the largest law firms in the, companies, in, in the country. Major companies, banks, government positions, everything from judges to uh, civil service workers, the United Nations and other non-governmental organizations. You also tend to see in New York City law schools a very diverse student body, a diverse, interesting group of JD and LLM students. And because you're in a city like New York City, the centers and institutes, the student groups, the programs that we hold, the visitors that we host, all are really at, their, at the peak of what you could expect anywhere at the most diverse and the broadest range of, of kinds of programs and visitors. But even more importantly, what you get in New York that you don't get in many other US cities is um, the ability to network effectively outside of the law school. Again, because New York is home to the nation's largest banks, law firms, many companies, media outlets, international organizations, you can develop a professional persona outside of the law school that I think is simply unparalleled. You also have, because of the size of New York and the prominence of the legal community in New York City, you have many, many outstanding bar associations. I'll just name a few. The Bar Association of the City of New York, which is often referred to colloquially as the City Bar. Um, the City Bar, the New York City Bar Association, is generally regarded as one of the most active, prominent, and best bar associations in the entire country. There are many, many opportunities for students to be engaged in this association, and many, many others. The international section of the, um, uh, uh, of the American Bar Association, the international section of the State Bar Association, the Federal Bar Association, but also topical bar associations. If you're interested in banking law, there are banking law bar associations. If you're interested in intellectual property and information technology, there are topical bar associations in spades in a place like New York. And of course, we also have 
affinity-based organizations. So for example, South Asian Bar Association, Women's Bar Associations, all sorts of organizations in which you can become involved, in which you can contribute, and through which you can develop a network. You may be thinking to yourselves, why should I network? What does it provide me to create this kind of professional network? And I want to just mention a few of the benefits that you could get from networking. First of all, my view is that networking quite simply enhances your educational experience. When you have the opportunity to meet people from different professional settings, different people from different places with different backgrounds and different experiences, it will enhance your educational experience and probably your personal experience as well. But the network can also provide much more tangible benefits. Things like internships or externships during your LLM program. Maybe you want to work in a court as an intern to a judge. Maybe you want to work in a company or a law firm um, during your LLM experience. This is possible in a, in, in a city like New York that um, offers opportunities that are simply not available in smaller cities. Maybe you want a job after your LLM. Now the job market is very competitive, but to the extent there are jobs, there are probably significantly more jobs in New York City than in other cities in the United States. And again, if you're in New York City and you can develop those professional relationships during your LLM program, you'll have more uh, of an opportunity to be able to leverage those relationships for job possibilities after your LLM. If you decide to go back to your country, I, I think we have people on this call from, from around uh, Asia and perhaps around the world, there's always the issue of client development. You, if you have professional relationships with New York lawyers and lawyers from around the world, you will be able to develop business and, um, and, and business referrals. And this is something that will be very, very useful to you and to your law firm or your company in the future. Finally, I want to say something about the bar exam. In the United States, we have what many consider to be a very odd system. And the system is that in each of the 50 states, there is a separate bar examination. And there are different rules for who is eligible to sit for the, New York, for, for the bar examination in each state. New York is one of a relatively small number of states that allows LLM graduates to sit for the bar exam. In most states, the state bar examiners require that you hold a JD, which is the standard three-year law degree that I have that most US lawyers have. But New York is one of the states that allows you to sit for the bar exam if you hold an LLB or equivalent from your home country and a US LLM. This is an excellent credential regardless of what you plan to do after your LLM. Finally, I want to say something about um, the experience you're going to have as an individual and, and less as a professional. And that is the, the, the cultural engagement that you get in a city like New York. You're going to have fun in New York. I can guarantee that you will have fun in New York. And Contrary to conventional wisdom, I believe that having fun, having a great year, is an important part of the LLM. Whatever you enjoy doing, we have it in New York. If you're into arts or theater, we have that. If you're into sports, we have many, many sporting teams and many opportunities to play sports. We have one of the best public parks probably in the entire world, Central Park. If you enjoy clubbing or bars or restaurants, we have it. If you enjoy taking long walks, you can do that in New York. So I think it's a place where everyone can find something that they enjoy. New York is also um, the most culturally, ethically, uh, racially, religiously diverse place in the country. It's a place where whatever you look like, wherever you're from, whatever you believe in, you will belong. Nobody makes judgments about anybody in New York. That is, for me, probably the thing I enjoy most about New York City. It is a place where everyone feels at home and where you will always find company because there's so many people from outside the city and outside the country. I want to talk to you now a little bit about Fordham's LLM. 
Uh, and I want to mention some of the elements of Fordham's LLM program that to me um, I think really exemplify what makes Fordham a very special place. First of all, we're very flexible. You can begin your LLM studies in August, which is true at, I believe, every U.S. law school that offers an LLM. We also allow you to begin your program in January. We've, we have found over the years that for some students, beginning in January just makes more sense. And so we have the flexibility to allow you to begin in January. You can study full-time or you can study part-time. And if you're a part-time student, we have a number of evening and even weekend classes that make your schedule a little bit easier. Our faculty members are incredibly open to students and very, very devoted to the student experience. We also, as I alluded to before, have a very robust cadre of adjunct part-time professors who come from the best law firms in the country, companies, the United Nations, top banks. Uh, let me just give you a couple of examples. Right now, we have a course in merger and mergers and acquisitions taught by the head of M&A at White & Case in New York. We had the um, chief compliance officer of Dell teaching a course in compliance uh, last semester. This is just an example of the kinds of professors we can draw, again, largely because we're in New York City. We also have a brand new state-of-the-art facility. I hope you can see the picture of our building on your screen. Uh, if not, we would love for you to join and see this brand new building that every day when I walk in that building, and I think many people feel the same way, students, faculty, administrators, you walk into this building and you immediately feel that you're in a place that is built for the current age, for the future. It's a place where you're comfortable, you have all the the, the state-of-the-art facilities um, that you would expect from a top law school in the United States. Our curriculum is both, both broad and deep. It, again, we're a fairly large law school, so we can offer a lot of courses in a lot of different fields. We also have been developing in recent years a number of skills courses for LLM students. So you could take drafting courses, courses in negotiation, um, there are clinical opportunities where you can work with real live clients. And we have a very, very interesting externship program. This semester alone, we have students at a federal court of appeals. We have students in a federal bankruptcy court. We have students at law firms. We have students in companies, including Christie's, the big art auction house, um, including at TED, TED Talks. We have a number of students interning at TED. Um, and you can design your own externship opportunity. So get out there, meet people, develop an externship opportunity, and you can do that as part of your LLM program. We have a special course devoted to helping you succeed in the bar examination if you choose to take the bar exam. Um, we have flexibility in the, in the curriculum to allow you to take courses in other disciplines. So imagine that you're a student studying information technology and intellectual property, but you're interested in understanding how corporations function. Well, there is room in the curriculum for you to be able to take corporations, for you to be able to take mergers and acquisitions, etc. Most of your courses will be with JD students. I think this is an enormously value, uh, valuable proposition. Why? Because Americans like myself tend to think in different ways. And in particular, when we think about legal issues, we approach them from a way that may not be familiar to you. The more Americans you can sit side by side with in your classes, the more you can understand the American perspective on law and legal issues, the more you can become comfortable um, being in an American context, and the more you'll be able to network and work more effectively within our culture. Finally, we have a relatively new program um, called the Dual Concentration Program, and it allows you to stay for one extra semester and receive your LLM degree in any two areas of specialization. Here is a list of the eight areas of study that we have. Any two of these eight can be combined, and if you stay for three semesters, you can get the LLM in banking, corporate, and finance law, for example, and international business and trade law. You can combine any of these, these two areas. We also have a doctoral program for any of you who may be interested in high-level scholarly work following your LLM. 
we have a small but very, very serious, very excellent SJD program. Because we're in New York, we have a range of centers and institutes, extracurricular opportunities, student groups, and journals in which you can participate as a student. And your network, right within the LLM program, will consist of more than 150 students from more than 40 countries. Many of these students have experienced everything from working as judges in their country um, to having been working in the legislature or executive branch to um, high partners and associates in top law firms around the world and companies. Um, we also have a very active alumni base uh, who are really devoted to helping other Fordham Law alumni and students. And I want to say that when I came to Fordham Law School about 12 years ago, the thing that impressed me most immediately was the incredible community of alumni who were extremely devoted to, to Fordham Law School with a passion that I had never seen before. I've worked at a number of other law schools, and I had never seen the kind of passion and devotion to the alma mater that I saw from Fordham alumni. And finally, we have an expression in New York that says, the only thing that matters is location, location, and location. If you don't know where Fordham Law School is located, uh, you're going to be delighted. It is about two blocks from Central Park. It is right across the street from Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. And it is just a short walk from Hell's Kitchen, Midtown, basically all the places where young people would enjoy um, visiting bars, restaurants, museums, clubs, and other cultural institutions. I would invite you to try a short program at Fordham before committing to the LLM program. We have a summer institute which takes place in July. I've given you the web page here where you could find information. We typically have 80 to 120 participants, participants from around the world. And what this course is is basically a survey of the most important areas of US law. Um, we also have a shorter winter program that takes place in January. And it's a very intensive introduction to the US legal system. I teach it. It's about eight days. And you will sit side by side with incoming LLM students. So you can really get a feel for what it's like to be in the LLM program. Both programs include visits to courts and or law firms. Both programs provide excellent networking opportunities. And both programs end with a celebration and a certificate ceremony. I want to close by thanking all of you for listening to this. Um, I know that, for me at least, it's not ideal to talk um, through this kind of webinar um, format. I much prefer meeting each of you. And this is why I would encourage you to contact me by email. And let's talk privately if you have any questions. I hope there'll be some questions now that we can address. But certainly invite you to email me anytime with questions, with concerns, and visit. If you happen to be in New York, or near New York, or if you can arrange a visit to New York City, I would be absolutely delighted. Let me know in advance. Tell me you were on this call. Um, uh, it's just been, it would be absolutely terrific to welcome you to our law school. We can arrange for you to sit in on some classes, to meet some current students, to see our facilities, and get a general sense of the family that is Fordham Law. I'm going to end my remarks now and wait and see if there are any questions from any of you. Um, and again, to thank you for, for being on this call. Thank you very much, uh, Tony, for taking the time to uh, you know, give a, a complete presentation of, uh, of, of making the best use of the time in, uh, in, in New York. Uh, to all the attendees who are listening, so if at all you have any question, if you can see a, 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 a hand symbol over there, you can just raise your hands and just type in the question and I can ask Tony the question. Tony, uh, while, while the attendees are considering the questions that they have, uh, I would like to ask two specific questions so on, based on what you have presented. And it will be useful because uh, you know this video is getting recorded, and uh, if at all other students have the same question, they can they can listen in on that. Uh, you had told that in in Fordham there is a uh, if, if if there is a three semester 
uh, uh, module that is taken or that, that uh, uh, a student stays on for three semesters, then uh, they get two specialization. So is that like a is that like two LLM or just one LLM with two different specialization? So if they are uh, if they are writing it in their CV, can they write it as LLM in international business law and in and LLM in uh, human rights law? Is that possible or will they be uh, writing it as LLM in human rights and international law? That's a great question, Vishnu, and we had petitioned the state to allow us to award two LLMs so that you could say LLM in international law and justice and LLM in international dispute resolution, for example. And the state denied that request. So um, we still think it's incredibly valuable, but it is a single LLM in two areas of specialization. All right, understood. So there is a question. Uh, the, the question is from Swarnam Srivastava. Swarnam, thank you for your question. Uh, Swarnam asks, are there any externships or internships included in the LLM curriculum, which is part of the LLM curriculum? Is there, is there an externship or an internship which is included as part of it? Swarnam, that's a, that's a wonderful question. Thank you for that. So let me explain how it works. There is the possibility to do an externship for credit. And the way it works is you would register for the externship field work, which is two credits, and an externship seminar, which is one credit. And the seminar is, brings together all of the LLM students who are doing externships, and they talk about professionalism issues, issues that come up during the externship, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in terms of securing the placement, that is up to each individual student. We have a number of hosts that work regularly with our students, and we inform you through our newsletter about those opportunities. And then the student applies directly to the placement, let's say M1 Real Estate or TED or Sony. I forgot to mention that we have a couple of people working at Sony Music, which is incredibly interesting. Um, so you secure the externship on your own, but we have a number of institutional relationships um, that, are, that work with us on a regular basis. You can also go outside those relationships. So if you've identified a company or a law firm that you would like to work with and we don't already have a relationship with them, you can reach out and we're happy to help you in any way and get the internship on your own and then bring it into the program and register for credit. D does that, um, Swatlam, answer the question? Uh, Swarnam, does that answer your question? If you if it does, then you can just type in uh, type in here. Uh, uh, alternatively, uh, you know, uh, yes, he says yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, there wonderful. Are, thank you for see, the question. I, I can see two other hands that is raised, Pramod and Ravika. I can see that you have a question. So if you can uh, type out the question, then I can just uh, uh, you know read it out to Tony over here. Uh, and in the meantime, while they are while they are asking the question, uh, Tony, you also mentioned that there is an SJD program which is equivalent to a PhD in law uh, at at Fordham University. Uh, so, does the person who is studying over there or applying for the uh, SJD program, do they have to take the LLM from Fordham, or they can they could have taken the LLM from let's say anywhere in the world, and they just want to do a SJD? Is that possible? <laughs> Great question, uh, Vishnu. What you need to have is an LLM from a U.S. law school. It does not have to be Fordham. I'm going to return to that in a moment. It does not have to be Fordham, but it does have to be either in the, preferably in the U.S. In some cases, we have accepted students from, um, with LLMs from other English-speaking common law countries. So, for example, right now we have a young man in the SJD program who studied in South Africa. Um, an LLM from the U.S. is preferable for a number of reasons. And let me, let me just say one thing about whether you do your LLM at Fordham or not in terms of getting into the SJD program. One of the requirements for being admitted to the SJD program is that we, we or you identify a member of the full-time faculty who's interested in working with the student. 
we would never take a doctoral candidate who doesn't who who doesn't have um, a faculty member interested in working with him or her. And the reason is that would just be a disaster for the student to be a doctoral student and not have a faculty member committed to working with him or her. So the advantage of doing your LLM at Fordham, if you're thinking about our SJD program, is that you can build relationships within the law school so that by the time you apply to the SJD program, hopefully you have a professor already committed to working with you. But in, in, in practice and in theory, you could do your LLM at any US law school and, and come to, to Fordham for the SJD. Well, thanks a lot, Tommy. Uh, now we have two questions, uh, okay. one from Pramod and one from Rebecca. Rebecca ha asked, uh, are there any placement opportunities offered, like after the LLM, are there any placement opportunities that's been offered? And uh, Pramod asked, if, uh, what is the eligibility for joining the course? Uh, that is any minimum mark which is required for the LLB. So uh, I presume both of them are from India, and uh, they're asking like, is there a, uh, like Pramod asked like, is there any minimum requirement for uh, the undergraduate Great. law degree? And Rebecca asked uh, if uh, there is any placement opportunity that is offered, uh, um, you know, after the LLM. Great. Let Let me start with Ramut's question first as to eligibility. Um, we do not have any particular grade cutoff. And the reason is that we're a school that cares deeply about the kind of community, the kind of people that join our community. And so we look holistically at applications. And so occasionally we find a student, an applicant, maybe the grades were not as good as he or she would have liked, but the person has some really interesting internship experiences or their letters of recommendation are very, very strong, or we can tell from the personal statement that, that the, the applicant is a very interesting, kind of innovative, entrepreneurial person. So we balance all of those factors in our admissions decisions. Um, we do not have any cutoffs. One of the things we do look for, even for students from India, um, is, is proof of English language ability through a TOEFL or an ILAC. Um, we can sometimes substitute that with a, with, with a phone call, and um, what you can do is if, if you don't have time for an English test and you believe your English is really good, send me an email and I'll arrange for someone on, on my staff to give you a phone conversation uh, to substitute for that. We don't do that on a regular basis, but I want to offer it to the people who are on this call. Um, we really want to make sure that people have decent English skills because otherwise the experience is not a good one for you. But there is no cutoff of any kind. We look holistically at, um, at, at, at applicants, and we really look for people who are going to contribute to our community. Um, and, and so we really look at all the factors. Um, Ravika's question about placement. We do have someone in my office who works with you in helping you develop networking skills, helping you polish your resume. A US style resume is a very particular thing that's different from the resumes you may have and been using in your in your home countries to work with you on your cover letter to work with you on identifying opportunities um, we don't we don't operate as a placement office per se but we do find out about opportunities and we do let you know of opportunities we also take part in something called ICIP the International Student Interview Program it's a program that takes place every January in New York City and brings employers from around the country, excuse me, from around the country and around the world. And um, there's only a number of law schools that participate in ISIP. And it's a closed system. And I'm really glad, Ravika, that you asked the question because if you're interested in employment prospects, please make sure that the school you choose is part of the ICIP program. Uh, it's a very, very important mechanism for looking for work, not only in the US, but around the world. So we, 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 don't, we don't actually, per se, place people, but we do know of opportunities, um, and we do help you develop your professional persona and help you seek opportunities that will help you find positions. Thank you for that uh -huh. question.
uh, and Tony, we have another question uh, from uh, Pramod. And uh, this again seems to be like a very popular question even in the previous uh, webinars and you know the other law schools also during this uh, LLM week. Uh, we had so many of these questions, uh, I mean with so many similar questions. So what is the course duration and what is the applicable fee like including the tuition and the living expense? And are there any scholarship for the program? And if there are scholarships, what is the criteria? Great questions. And I can imagine that they're very important questions. Um, the first question is very easy. The duration of the program is nine months of study, nine to 10 months of study. If you begin your program in August, as most people do, you would end your studies in May and graduate in June. If you begin your studies in January, you would have your first semester January through May. You would then have a two or three month period of, of, of holiday, two months about, in which students either take classes or get internships. The summer is a very, uh, very popular time for internships. And then you would come back in late August and conclude your studies in December. So it's about nine months of, of study. Um, tuition is, uh, is it's expensive. It's worth every penny, but it's very expensive. At most law schools, tuition is probably about 55 to 60,000 US dollars. Housing, yeah, I would say it depends on how you live. Even in a city like New York, which is more expensive than many other US cities, you could probably live, if you were to share an apartment, you could probably live on $1,500 to $2,000 per month. You may not be able to live um, in a Woody Allen style apartment uh, that you might see in the movies. Um, but of course, I don't live in a Woody Allen style apartment either. Um, you would share an apartment with a friend or a classmate or a stranger. Um, you can save money by living in Queens or New Jersey rather than in Manhattan or Brooklyn. So I would say that um, $2,000 per month uh, should do it on the sort of housing, food, and extras. Uh, New York City is fairly expensive when it comes to housing, but you can eat very cheaply. Everything else is very inexpensive. Shopping is not that expensive, um, and I think that um, $2,000 should be more than enough per month. Again, if, if you plan to live like Woody Allen's characters, that's not going to happen. Um, but, but many people uh, find a way to live on a budget. Long Island is another option. The Bronx is another option. Uh, and so there are ways to, to, to live less cheaply than you might imagine. Tuition will run between $55,000 and $60,000. Are there scholarships? Yes. More and more there are scholarships because more and more law schools are competing for outstanding students like you. And so, um, uh, uh, Ramul, uh, to answer your question, there are scholarships available. Uh, different schools offer different amounts. And um, all I could say is we look for students with good grades, good experience, good English, sk English language skills, and people who we think are going to be um, enjoyable, productive, successful members of the community. Um, one other thing I would suggest that you do is visit the US consulate or embassy, wherever you are, um, and ask them if they know of resources for scholarships. Because one of the things that US consulates and embassies do is encourage people like you around the world to come and study in the US. So they may have an excellent set of resources for learning about scholarships in different parts of the country and at different law schools. You should, when you apply to a law school, you should always ask, say, I'm interested in a scholarship. Um, and, and, and believe me, we are very interested in getting you. It is a buyer's market right now. You, excellent candidates, are very, very desirable and all of the law schools are competing for you. So please ask, and we will always do our best to make that happen. Uh, I, I, I do have a, a, a question. Actually, uh, Rebecca personally asked this to me uh, in a private chat. But then again, 
I would like to uh, ask you as this uh, this question as well. Uh, when applying for an LLM uh, in uh, Podem or in any of the U.S. law schools, what kind of candidates are considered more favorably? Is it is it the ones who just finished an LLB or is it uh, a, a lawyer with one or two or three years practical experience? Like who's viewed more from you more favorably? That's a great question, and I think it's, I think all things being equal, there is a slight preference for candidates who have a little bit of experience. A little bit of work experience gives you some maturity, and I think gives you some perspective. It gives you a context that helps you better understand your studies. Having said that, we have some outstanding students who have just finished their LLB, but it's harder to show that you're outstanding if you just finished your LLB. So you would have great, terrific grades, and that's terrific, and you might have some internship experience. Um, and, and if you have a good internship experience, in my view at least, that can substitute for real work experience. Um, so I think um, I, I think all things being equal, it's better to have a little bit ex of experience. But what I always say to people who ask me, when should I come for the LLM? I would say the same thing. All things being equal, it's good to get a year, two, three of experience first. But at the end of the day, it's a decision that also includes your personal situation. Um, if because of family situation or because of whatever kind of personal issues you have. It's better to come right after the LLB. There are many, many schools that will be very, very happy to have you. Um, if you're one of those people, it would be good to try to get some internship experience along the way. Um, that will help make your application look even better. But you should come whenever it, looks be whenever it seems best for you. Uh, are you still there? Uh, yes, Hello? yes, uh, yes, yes, Tony, we are, we are, My screen disappeared, so I want to yeah, make sure right. that you're yeah, still Yeah, yeah, it, it, okay. it did. Your screen disappeared, and uh, now it's a, it's a different screen that's there, but it's okay. You can, I mean, we can see okay. you and we can hear uh, you. As long as you can see me and hear me, importantly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the other problem with, with waiting until you work for a few years, a number of people have told me that it's complicated because once you begin at a law firm or a company, they don't want to let you go always. And you get sort of involved in your, in your professional progression. So it's sometimes a little more complicated to leave. So my answer would be all things being equal, having a little bit of experience is probably best. But at the end of the day, you should do what's best for you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Tony, for that input. Uh, if there is any further questions, please feel free to type it. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, uh, the, the, there is uh, there's one more question which I wanted to ask, uh, which uh, yeah. is is more for uh, the SJD candidates because uh, okay. so far we you know the number of people who are who have been in the webinar mostly are uh, looking at the LLM program, but uh, you know SJD is also one of the options, and you know there are few people who are very keen on this PhD, so. Just wanted to uh, ask, like, is there any minimum requirement or the cutoff that is required for a PhD program? So, in an LLM, uh, if the person has, uh, uh, is there like, has, is he required to have published some work, or is he or she required to have obtained a certain level of grading, so or, or marks? Is there any such requirement for the SDD program? Great question, Vishnu. Thank you for that. Um, no, there is, again, there is no cutoff per se, but I would say that at most schools, certainly at Fordham, the SJD program is significantly more competitive than the LLM program. We accept very few candidates. And let me tell you what we look for. We do look for excellent grades in the LLM program. We look for excellent grades, but there's no cutoff. And occasionally, we have taken students who had maybe good grades, but not excellent grades. Why? Because they came in not necessarily with a publication record, but they came in with an outstanding scholarly proposal. And it's the scholarly proposal 
that in my experience has been the most persuasive factor in determining admissions to the, L to the SJD program. You want to come in with a, um, a doctoral thesis that is innovative, new, interesting, and, and, and scholarly. And that, Vishnu, in my experience, has been the most persuasive element of the doctoral application. Doing well in your grades is important. Writing well, of course, being able to communicate well in written English is very important. But a really powerful, interesting proposal is the thing that's going to take you from a good doctoral candidate to a, to a, to a candidate that's admitted. Thank you so much, so, Tony. And uh, we have a very, uh, actually, a brilliant question. Uh, question from uh, Pramod, who has asked, uh, like, what is the daily timing of the course, and how many days in a week? Uh, and then, is it possible to work part time along with, uh, you know, if if they are there on a student visa? Now, this actually is probably a. I I just rephrase that question once again, but. This is again a very uh, crucial question that uh, that that many many people have in their mind, and it's kind of one of the FAQ questions that you know, if if at all, uh, you know, when we organize the Legal Education Expo, we uh, I mean, it's it's one of the questions that is asked to most of the most of the um, uh, graduate uh, uh, officers and the deans and all that. Like, this is a very common question. So right. it, it's like, what exactly is the timing of the course uh, for, for an LLM program? How many hours of study is required? And is it possible to work part-time if they are on a student visa in, in the US? Great, Ramu, thank you for that. And I can imagine that that's a very popular question. Um, let me deal with the question first of work. It is not, if you're on a student visa, it is not possible to work until you've been in the country on a student visa for one full year. So if you were to come for the LLM and do the three semester double degree program, double concentration program, you could work during your third semester. You could work during your third semester under something called CPT, curricular practical training. But you're not allowed to get paid until you've been um, on a student visa for one full year. So for most of you, that will be impractical in the beginning. In terms of your daily schedule, that's a fantastic question. Um, and it, normally, a student, an LLM student workload would include between 12 and 14 hours of in-class work per week. 12 to 14 hours of classes per week, which is not that much. And probably many of you are accustomed to being in class for many more hours per week. What you will find, though, is that the reading is significant. There will be a lot of reading. I don't know how it is in India and other countries represented on this call, but I know that in European countries, for example, many students are not accustomed to reading as much as they have to read in the US. So what people say is, for every hour in class, you probably have to do three to four hours of preparation at home, reading and outlining and note taking. So it's a significant commitment, but you're only in class for 12 to 14 hours per week. In terms of when those hours are, that will depend a lot on your individual schedule. There are At Fordham, and I think this is fairly common, there are courses starting, I think, at about 9 in the morning. Maybe one or two courses start earlier, like 8 or 8.30, but not too many. And they go throughout the day. At Fordham, we also have a lot of classes in the evening. Why? Because we have a pretty large part-time program. But whether you're a full-time student or a part-time student, you're eligible to take courses in the evening. So if you're the kind of person that likes classes in the evening, you have that option. At the end of the day, though, it's going to depend a lot on which courses you choose. So if, you, if you're taking some fairly exotic or quirky course, like, um, I can't think of anything at the moment. But there'll be a number of courses that are offered several times in a semester. And there'll be many courses that are only offered once or twice a semester. So you'll have to really arrange your schedule around the courses that you choose. And of course, 
We have people in my office, myself and others, who will help you arrange your schedule. Um, you can choose the hours in which you take them to some extent, um, but not entirely because you want to, of course, pursue your, your curricular interests, um, and that will depend on when the courses are offered. What I would suggest, um, Ramuth, for you and anybody else who's interested, is to go to the Fordham Law School webpage and take a look at our course listings. If you go to Fordham Law School, or even do this, Google Fordham Law Course Schedule. Fordham Law Course Schedule. It will take you to a page that will let you choose which semester. And what I recommend, and I recommend that you do this for any law school that you're thinking about going to, look at the fall 2016 schedule, look at the spring 2017 schedule. It will give you a sense of the courses that are offered and the days and times that those classes meet. And that will give you a sense of the way you could build your own schedule. Is, is that helpful enough? Uh, Pramod, is that, is that, does that uh, answer your question? Uh, Pramod, does that, uh, yes, yes, he says yes, okay. it's clear. All right, excellent. Thank you, Pramod. There's one question from uh, Swarnam who uh, I have actually pasted that, I've uh, copied and sent you that question as well. Uh, he asked that, are there any research-based position available for LLM candidates at the university, like assisting a faculty in his or her research while they are doing an LLM? Yeah. Fantastic question. Uh, I wish I thought of all of these myself. Um, there are. There are research positions, but there are not enough that you could count on it, that you could rely on getting one. The way it would work would be in one of two ways. One would be a professor puts out a request and says, um, we just had something a couple of months ago where we had a professor put out a request. He needed several Spanish speakers, just as an example, to, to do some uh, work on, um, on privacy law. And so we put the word out. and We had about six or seven Spanish-speaking LLM students work for this professor and doing research in various Latin American countries. And this could happen once in a while. Or a professor says, I'm looking for someone with um, experience in mergers and acquisitions. Or I'm looking for someone with experience in securities regulation. Or I'm looking for someone who does competition law. Um, the other way that you could do this is that you could simply approach a professor who has a profile that you find interesting. So you would look through, let's imagine that you're admitted at Fordham and you decide to join us. You've made me very happy. Your next step could be, if you're interested in this, is to go to our web page and look at our faculty and look for faculty members who do work that are in, that's interesting to you. And you could just reach out to that professor or ask my office to facilitate this and make an introduction and say, here's my resume, here's my background. I would be really delighted if you had an opportunity for me to research with you. Um, and occasionally that works. So we have a couple of students right now who have done that, reached out to professors with whom they had an interest in working, and it worked out, and they're doing research um, with that professor. So yes, there are opportunities, but it's not something you can really rely on. Thank you very much, uh, Tony. I, I think, uh, is there any further question? I, I can see uh, uh, if someone raised their hand. No. Uh, yeah, no, we, thank you so much, uh, Tony. Thank, thanks a lot for uh, addressing all these questions. And, my um, pleasure. Uh, the, the questions are always my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you know, it, 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 it's it's uh, it's quite helpful also because we have people joining in from uh, from various places, uh, and uh, you know, uh, with the recording being available, so many of the, the the FAQ questions are also addressed. So thank you, thank you very much for that. Uh, so if there is no further question, then uh, if, uh, unless uh, unless is uh, unless you have any any uh, anything further to add, then we can we can uh, probably conclude the webinar. And to all the people who are uh, listening, in, there is another webinar on uh, on doing an LLM in the U.S. later today at 
7.30 p.m. Uh, Indian Standard Time if at all you are interested in taking part in that as well. But um, Tony, otherwise if uh, if you have any further, anything else to address, please. No, Vishnu, just to thank you and to thank all of the people who are on the call. And again, I welcome you to contact me directly if you have any additional questions or please visit uh, if you're going to be in New York. I would I would be absolutely delighted to show you around Fordham. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, so, Thank you all. Bye. Thank you.